Hey, how you doing? Joshua Kittle here with Opus Advisors. Thank you very much for joining me on this uh, video series. Uh, we've been talking about USDA loans and just kind of diving into different facets of it. So, so far we've covered things on what USDA is about kind of in general and who's it for. We touched on last week about the property types and what USDA is looking for there. And this week what I want to talk about is income. Because USDA does have some unique characteristics when it comes to income. Unlike the other programs of the standard conventional Fannie and Freddie loans, those are conventional or what we call conforming loans, uh, FHA and VA, USDA actually has income caps. So it's not just a matter of do you make enough money to qualify for the payment, but you could in fact make too much money and therefore not qualify for the home. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So what's too much money for USDA? Well, it's not a super simple answer because it does depend on where you're going to be purchasing the property at. Now, USDA basically looks at income for a household as persons from one to four people live in the house compared to persons of five to eight people live in the house. And if you happen to have a very large family and exceed eight, there's some additional calculations. So we'll just focus today on just the one to four income families and kind of what we're looking at. So depending on the area, this uh, can change. USDA is looking at what they call the median earned income, area income, which is put out each year by the government kind of does analysis of what uh, the different areas of the U.S. are making for air income. And USDA looks at the average or the median income for that area, and they want the household to be making that or below. So right now, if you're looking at buying in Lane County or Lynn County, that limit as of uh, today is about 75650 total household income. And that's a key word, household income. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But if you're living, say, in Benton County, so you're in Lynn County, but you decide to go over and buy in Benton County, because the average income in that county is higher than most of the, United, the rest of the uh, state of Oregon, it's actually one of the highest in the state of Oregon, and you're able to earn about 90000 300000 total household income and still qualify. Now, if you go over that by a penny, you're going to be disqualified from the program. It is a very hard and fast rule. And so there's not like this buffer where I'm only over by 100 bucks, can I still get the program? Unfortunately not. Okay, so now again, let's go back just real quick and say if you're in a household of five to six persons and you're in Lynn County, you'd be looking at about 99,800 max household income. And if you're going back to Benton County, you'd be looking at 119,200 max household income for five to eight persons. Now again, if you have questions specifically, uh, as you know, I lend all over the state of Oregon. So if you have any questions about your particular area and what the max income limits are for USDA, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer those questions. So now the other unique thing with USDA when it comes to income is because it has this max household income limit, they have two different ways in which they calculate income. The first way which is pretty traditional with like all the other loan programs, is they're looking at how much can you afford. And for this calculation, they're going to take the persons or borrowers who are on the loan and add up their income to determine how much you can afford as a house payment. So when we talk about affordability, we're looking at what is the uh, debt-to-income ratio of the house payment as a percent of your income. And then the other ratio we look at is the house payment plus consumer debt things that are on your credit report as a percent of your uh, household income. And if you want more information on credit or debt ratios, we can watch that in a different video. But anyway, so that's that ratio there is very much like everybody else where the person's on their application, we're going to add up your income, we're going to take a look at what we can use from a lending standpoint, and we're going to compare that to your debt to make sure you qualify for payment. However, on the calculation in which we use for disqualifying for making too much money for the program that is based on household income and that is a key difference here and it's very important to, to know this so again for qualifying if you're a married couple and only for say only the spouse is going to be on the loan one of the spouses then it's just their income that's going to be used to qualify as far as how much you can afford however on the disqualifying the program for making too much money even if the other spouse is not on the loan application, but they have an income, they will use that income in combination with the person who's on the loan to see what the total household income is and disqualify you. 
So if you have persons in the household that are over the age of 18, if they're receiving uh, income, Social Security, and or disability, even though they're not on the loan, we will take a look at their income and add that up to determine whether or not you exceed these limits we just talked about. Now the other little caveat, or kind of the, the downside of this is, is when the lender or USDA is looking at your income to qualify you for how much of a payment you can afford, they're going to use a more conservative calculation in determining that. So they're going to look at your last two years, your most recent year, and your year-to-date pay stub, and use the lower of those two averages. And there's a lot more that goes into income we won't talk about today, but in a general sense, if you have qualifying income, that's how they're going to look at it. Now, when they go to disqualify you from making too much money, they're going to do the opposite way, and they're actually going to use the most liberal way of looking at all the person's income in the household and determining if you make too much. So again, two years, they're going to look at the last one year, the year date, the most recent month, and look at what the highest average is and use that. And there's a few exceptions if, you know, perhaps it's early in the year and you receive a bonus from last year that's paid out to this year. And so that first month, you're going to look like you have a lot of income. We can kind of explain that away and support that for USDA. But that's the big thing to know about with USDA is that, uh, again, they have income limits based on how many persons are going to be living in that household, one to four, five to eight, eight or more. And for more detail on those limits, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to look at your area and tell you specifically. USDA has two different calculations for income, one for qualifying, one for disqualifying for making too much money, and those both have different ways of calculating that. So I hope you enjoyed this little video on that. It's probably quite quick and a little bit confusing, but again, if you have any questions about USDA loans or any other home loans, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions in uh, more specific uh, detail. My number is 541-284-8032, or if you're watching this video on Facebook, simply send a comment to me, and I'll be in touch and see what I can do to help you. All right, thank you very much, and have a fantastic day.